Hello people of the web and YouTube, DBK here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make Animesh in Second Life. Now with that said guys, Animesh is super simple. All you gotta need is some animation files, as well as a simple LSL script. Other than that, you're gonna need a rigged model, and if you guys don't know what rigged models are, watch my video, I will have one linked in the description down below, where I go and teach you guys how to make a rigged avatar model. Now once you have a rigged avatar model, I got this one of Tea Gardener here. As you can see, it's rigged because when I move around, it moves, so that means it can be used as Animesh. So to get Animesh to work like I did here with this Tea Gardener model, all you got to do is make a square prim, link the two items together, drop a script in, and an animation, and you're good to go. But instead of just showing you, how about we go and make our own, shall we? So alright, here we go. I got a template, it's just a simple Jinzo avatar that I've rigged and made, and we're gonna animate it. Now, before you continue on, you gotta be on a viewer that supports Animesh. Now in my case, I'm using Firestorm, the latest build, which does have Animesh support, and I believe the standard Second Life viewer has Animesh support, but all the other viewers out there, some of them may not have Animesh support, so if you go and do this in the Animesh, doesn't work, there's a chance that your viewer just doesn't support it, or you got the setting turned off. But yeah, to get this all to work, you gotta start with your rigged model, and make a new item next to it. I'm just gonna make a simple square, and once you got your square made, you can just hold shift, click on your model, and after you do that, you wanna hit on link. Now these two things are linked, but before the animesh can work, you gotta go under the features tab, click on animated mesh and sometimes your character will jump up here don't worry if it does once we get it animated it should snap back to the ground but yeah as you can see we have animesh now enabled but we don't have code in here to make it work to get it all to work i'm going to provide you guys with two scripts i got these scripts from um the second life wiki and there's a lot more scripts out there for animesh but these two are pretty good and they work pretty well and reliably in my opinion. The first script and the only script I got on hand at the moment is a simple script that when you click the box it will make the animesh move. But if you want to just click the box and have it keep moving you can simply just delete line 17 on this code. But speaking of the code, since you guys are probably confused at what this is right now on the screen, this is the code that tells the object to move, and it looks for an animation file, in this case, talk goof. It's trying to find that animation, but it can't since the animation isn't in the content window here on our box. So to get our animation in the content window here, we can just open up our inventory, find our animation file. In my case, this one's all set up for talk goof, so I'm just going to drag and drop it in there. And that's it, we can hit save on this script, close out of the editor, close out of the script, close out of our inventory if it's open, and the moment we click on this box, our Jinzo should now move. Now just be aware the animation files I got currently on my open sim here are really janky and broken, and that's probably why he's clipping through the ground, but you can easily just raise him back up. So he's standing on the ground, and when you touch the box, he will move. Now let's say you don't want this box here. That's super simple, and you, if you're a beginner out there, I could see how maybe you could miss this step. If you want to hide the box, all you got to do is go hit Edit Linked, hit the box, or you can use the little arrows here up to you. I'm just going to click the box, and when you're in here, you can go under Texture, and just up the transparency. And there you go, your box is now invisible and out of the way. But as you can see, this one only works when we touch the box, so how about we go out of our way and change that? We want our Jinzo to move all the time the moment we launch the script and touch it. So to do that, you can go under the script here and delete line 17. That will tell it not to stop the animation. You can hit save, close out, and when we click on our box, he will endlessly move around just like our tea gardener model here. 
And by the way, I know her animations broke. I have some really messed up broken animations on my open sim, like I said. But yeah, as you can see, it works. And you're not limited to just this animation script either. There's another one out there. It's set up the same way, except you get a simple little HUD. So when you click on the box, you have an option to choose from three or more different uh, animation files in this content window. Now this script only chooses one animation as you can see, but if you can figure this script out, you can figure the other script out because setting it up is basically the same, so I shouldn't have to go over it, but I will be linking both the scripts down below in the description, or well, I'll just link you right to the Second Life wiki where they talk about it. And those scripts do wonders, and I'm sure you guys will get the hang of them quick and want to find other animus scripts that are available. But yeah guys, that is basically it for this video. I showed you how to make Animesh, and it's really as simple as that. Just start with the rigged character, link a box to it, and put your script in, and either hide the box under the ground or make it invisible. Click it, and it's, well, Animesh now. We'll just continually move for as long as the sim is active. And yeah, that's it, like I said. Um, if you run into any issues, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out. But that is basically it for this video, and I'm going to leave it off here now. DTBK signing off. Peace. All my prints pretty much came out perfect. Every single one I loaded into Cura and threw onto the printer, opened to rip a model directly from it. I suggest only using this if the game is giving...